I'm Priyanka Naik. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much, TEDx and Binghamton University, for inviting me. I'm going to be sharing eight tips to live a more eco friendly life in the kitchen and beyond. 1.3 billion. No, I'm not referring to the population size of India. What I am referring to is unfortunately 1.3 billion tons of food that is wasted and ends up in our landfills annually. Landfills produce over 10% of global methane emissions and are estimated to increase to 70% by 2050. But why should we care about methane emissions? Well, if you're wondering why we're having abnormal temperatures in the wintertime or an increased amount of earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, and generally natural disasters, you can likely thank methane emissions for that. Food wastage amounts to 25% of global methane emissions, which are driven by human action. I am not here to depress you all with all of these realities and facts, especially not dressed like Captain Planet over here. But what I am here to do is to tell you how you can live a more eco-friendly life on a day-to-day -day basis by making a few small changes. And it first starts with our mind. But before we get into that, who am I and why am I credible to speak on this subject matter? I'm a self-taught vegan and sustainable chef uh, my entire life revolves around food. I've had over a 10-year career in food while simultaneously maintaining a career in tech. Also an author. First book is called The Modern Tiffin. I'm a TV host and I'm a writer. I have a column called the Eco Kitchen column with the Washington Post. I'm a traveler. I've now traveled to 40 countries. And before we get into our eight tips, it's really important that we change our mindset because everything starts from the basis of how we think. I have three principles that I've lived by for a long time that have helped me develop a more eco-friendly life and just be open to new ideas. Principle one, let go of what you know. This is probably the most challenging principle to accomplish because as humans, we have a tendency to stick to our habits. By definition of a habit, it's something that you ingrain in your day-to-day -day life, it's a tendency in your day-to-day, -day, and it's really hard to let go of. But if you let go of what you know, then it opens up space for new thinking, new ideas, and new perspectives. For instance, a lot of us, at least my generation, we were taught at a very young age in school that the food pyramid was the end-all be-all, and that your plate should kind of maybe look like this a three or four segmented plate where there is a giant protein at the center, usually something non-veg, then there's a vegetable on the side and a carb on the side. And to me, that just seemed weird because in my home as an Indian American girl, we never ate like that. And a lot of cultures around the world don't necessarily eat like that. So when you let go of what you know, in this case, the three segmented plate, then your entire horizon opens up for what you deem as a complete meal. Principle two, open your mind. Just like this slide, which is completely blank, that's the intention. If you open your mind and think of your mind as a blank canvas, then it almost becomes a sponge to absorbing new ideas. I always get asked by friends, Priyanka, can you please take me to India the next time you go? And the one thing I always tell them is, well, sure, but you have to go in with an open mind because you're going to see new sights, new sounds, smell new things, meet different people, and maybe be in some not so comfortable situations. But the only way you can actually come out with a positive in, in experience and embrace that moment is if you go in with an open mind and not having any particular expectations or any particular notions about that experience. And I would say the same applies to food and also living an eco-friendly mind. When you keep your mind open to new habits and learning new ways of living, then you're more open to maybe implementing those habits into your day-to-day -day life. Principle three, and I think this is the most important one, is that our actions have an impact. We are all connected as people, as cultures, as countries, and the world is much smaller than we think it is. So for instance, I'm born and raised in New York City, 
And if I drink something from a plastic bottle, which God forbid, I'm trying not to, but if I do, then I'm gonna take that bottle and quote unquote recycle it. But that bottle, while it may disappear from my hands and my home, might end up in Canada or in Mexico or in Indonesia. Why? Because most plastic waste is exported and then it goes to plastic landfills, which then potentially detrimentally affects someone else's life in another country. We have to keep in mind that everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis not only affects us, but affects someone else that you may not actually see or meet. Now onto our eightfold path. And no, I'm not Siddhartha, but this is the eightfold path to create a more eco-friendly life. These are eight tips that I've developed throughout the past several years when I started researching more about how our actions impact the world. And in my case, I went from being vegetarian to vegan, more for environmental and ethical reasons. I wanted to become more thoughtful about everything that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I find that sometimes the most common sense tips and the most practical are the most impactful to our day-to-day -day life. Everything in these tips that I'm providing doesn't require you to buy anything new or really do anything crazy or live some sort of rich, glamorous life. You could probably do it at any stage of your life and your career. Let's minimize food wastage. I grew up in a household as the youngest child, had to sit at the dinner table first to eat because I ate very slow, and then I was the last to get up because my mom did not let me leave the table without finishing every piece of food on my plate. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. My first tip, if you go to a restaurant, please pack your food. I see so many people who go out to eat, they get a pasta dish, half of it's still on the plate, and then they don't pack it. And I'm like, that is an entire meal for like the next day for lunch. I'm even the type that packs the bread basket, and then I'll eat the bread later, or I toast it and make breadcrumbs out of it. Second, repurpose leftovers. All of us order takeout, we'll get white rice, and many times there's so much white rice and you don't know what to do with it and you're not gonna eat all of it. This is sacrilegious to say as an Indian person, but I'm not even a huge fan of white rice. Create it into something else. I'll make it fried rice, I'll make it into a burger. Third tip that I have here and one of my favorites is using all of the produce. Many times they'll sell produce where you see the carrots with the carrot tops. And so many times people will just cut off the tops and toss it and then they'll eat the carrots. And I'm like, well, the entire top is completely edible. Plus you get more bang for your buck. When you throw food in the trash, you're not only adding to the landfill, but you're also hurting your wallet. There are ways to save energy. Grew up traveling a lot, but I would go to India every single year of my life. And in some of the bungalows, the lights would go out. It was very commonplace and we would depend on a generator. Energy for us was very important conserving energy was important. But that same practice is not ingrained in the mentality in the States. The one thing that we can all do to save energy, and I just love the way this is referred to, is to unplug energy vampires. Those are appliances and gadgets that stay continuously plugged in. And even if you don't turn it on or use it, because it's plugged in, it's still using an energy source, therefore using energy. The second thing is, is to use your appliances more efficiently. So if you do want to warm up water to make tea, a better way to do it is by putting water in a pot, putting a lid on it and putting it on your stove because it heats up quicker than putting it in a kettle. If you're required to make a recipe or you want to cook something fast and it requires an oven, Think about a way that you can actually make it on your stovetop because convection ovens use double or triple the amount of energy that stovetops do. Reusing common items. I grew up again in a household where my mom was very particular about everything. And if we wanted to, let's say, drink water throughout the day, she would be like, can you just please use one glass and just use that glass throughout the day? Like you don't need to take like 10 glasses out of the cupboard and have 10 glasses around the house. Like just be conservative about what you use and how you use it. And if I'm using just that one glass, then I'm saving space in the dishwasher and I'm being conservative about the number of things that we're using in the house. Paper towels is one of my favorites. A paper towel has almost a life expectancy of like a cat. It has like nine lives. So if I rip a sheet and I wipe my hands after I wash it, I've used maybe like 15 or 20% of that piece of paper towel. I lay it out to dry, and then I could use it again for something else. The same goes for other household items like tinfoil, parchment, 
plastic. Next is minimizing water waste. If you're boiling noodles or vegetables in unsalted water, you can actually strain that water, cool it, and use it to water your house plants. Use that water to cook pasta in, or maybe use it for rice, or I'll use it for a broth. How can we be more sensible shoppers? Do not go shopping hungry. That's grocery store shopping. There's the desire of the want versus the need, versus if you have a snack and then you go shopping, then you will be more in the mental state of I think I need this and I'm gonna eat this throughout the week for these days so this makes sense. Try to shop more local. Not only supporting the communities, but you're also getting vegetables that are most likely in season. I also think about the size of bag that I'm taking. If I take a bigger bag, then I'm like, oh, I have all the space. Like I could put all this stuff in, I could get more stuff. But if I take a bag that's a little bit smaller, then I'm limited to that bag size that I'm shopping in. Let's try to do more frequent shopping. I tend to do more weekly grocery runs because I know at least for the next five to seven days, I know what my schedule is like, I know what I'm eating, I know if I'm going out, and then I could plan for. Oh. Six is cut down on packaging. As I became older, I became much more conscious of what I was buying, how I was buying it, and how it was packaged. So all of us shop on Amazon, but Amazon has a feature. If you delay the shipping of this one item for one day, then we could ship all of your items together in one box. Not only is it minimizing the packaging that is involved in those items that you're getting, but it also minimizes the transportation. When you order something, there are layers and levels of transportation that it has to go through. So it's not only coming from the warehouse, but then it may be going on a truck, it may be going on a plane, and then it's going on a local truck to then be delivered to you. So if you can minimize the transportation down to just one package, then you're minimizing that entire process. So there are a lot of different resources out there that offer more sustainably made products that are made with bamboo, like paper towels with, made from bamboo, toilet paper made from bamboo, toothbrushes made from bamboo. And the reason why these are important is because these items tend to be biodegradables. When you order takeout, many delivery apps offer, hey, do you want utensils with this or not? Always say like, please no utensil using your scraps. These are items that people deem as trash. So for instance, if you uh, peel an onion and you chop the onion, you use the onion, but then that peel just goes into the trash, that peel has multiple different lives. So you can dehydrate those peels in an oven and then you could grind it up and you can make onion powder. Another way to use it is in broth. If you do get organic, you can actually eat those peels. A very common practice and something that is also very heavily rooted in my culture. So no one would ever think watermelon rinds are edible, but the entire fruit is edible. Take the watermelon skins, mix it with tempered spices and oil. You have a really spicy, tangy Indian pickle that is shelf stable for almost six months. A creative way to take something that is deemed as trash and give it a new life. Now that I've provided you all of these tips and you have a new mindset and you're gonna go home and live an eco-friendly life, you can now party. Here are some tips that I can give you to now lead a more eco-friendly get together. If you are decorating your venue or your home or wherever, Try to think of using biodegradable um, decorations. So for instance, we had a Thanksgiving party once in our home with our family and friends, and I literally just went outside and picked leaves from the lawn and used it to decorate the table. And everyone walked in, they're like, oh my God, like was this table professionally decorated? And I was like, no, I just picked the leaves off the lawn. The second tip is anytime I have any sort of get together, I'm usually always cooking, but something that I tell my friends and family to do is BYOC, bring your own container. Uh, I usually always end up with leftovers and I like to feed people. So I tell them, hey, if you have your own reusable container, bring it so then I can pack leftovers and then you can take that meal home. And usually all of them are very receptive to it because I think they like my food. So it's a really fun way to get them to use what they have without me having to provide anything new and to also minimize food waste from any of your get togethers. And the third thing is to think about the type of materials in addition to the decoration that you're using when hosting any sort of party. So I like to use compostable 
plates and cups and cutlery because one, it's, it's an easy way for me to host without having to do a million dishes, but two, it's minimizing using those really unattractive plastic plates that, well, they don't even look good and then they're not good for the environment. So I'd rather use something that's more neutral, that's usually made from bamboo and it's biodegradable. I hope this kind of gives you uh, a gateway to how you can live a more eco-friendly life. And while it may seem like a lot, I just advise that, you know, every, every tip and example I gave is pretty common. It's very easy to implement and you could do it at any stage or anywhere in the world, really. And any change we make as an individual really does have an impact. And if we each made maybe one to three changes even in our day to day, and if we collectively did that, then think about the impact we have to help reduce that 1.3 billion tons of food that is wasted annually. So I hope we can bring that number down and let's reduce to improve. Thank you.